Okay, so we're gonna go through the lead today. Okay, so I'm just gonna recap on the lead what was done in the lesson. So just two things from your CSK is counter sunk and CB C bore is your counter bore. So the first thing we look at is the processes. So the processes, first one is facing off. And what's happening is your facing off tool is what we call it. Its movement is like this along the face. Okay, and it's gonna that what that does it cleans that face for me. So that's where your word facing off comes from. Parting off. The tool is moving into the middle of the piece to cut it. That essentially acts like a scoop. Okay, the the tooth, the that that carbide tooth, and it cuts the piece again, leaves a rough finish. Usually, it parted off maybe a mill away from the line and then faces it down to it. Taper turning is cutting something at an angle. Okay, so if something's tapered, it means it's coming into a point or it's at an angle. So spikes and things like that will be tapered. So if somebody ever talks about something being tapered, it means it's coming into it's getting narrower or it's coming into a point, one of the two. And so that what happens there is my tool moves at an angle. The usual is the tool will move straight down the piece like that. Not really like that, that's a bit off. But in taper turning it moves at an angle. In parallel turning, somebody said it's like peeling the piece. What it does is it narrows a section of it. You can see it there. That piece moves like that. And it peels down the layers, okay, and so what you, at the end of the day, you should have something that looks like this. Now, I'm just going to try and draw it so you know yourselves, my standard will draw Something like that, so you can see the way it's narrowed. Knurling is where you have a piece that looks like this, and you put this sort of uh, grippy finish on it. So the handles of ratchets and pegs on BMX bikes and things like that will be used. Uh, drilling and center drilling will go back up here. So you can see your center drill is like a dot punch, so if you find the center, is there sugar I keep? If you find this, oh my god, it lifted again. So it'll find the center for me. Again, the problem with using a drill bit to find the center is it'll do a thing called walking, and it could move around, and then somewhere along there it'll dr drill into the piece again. If it's not on center, it'll keep going until it bursts out through the side of the piece, or the drill bit breaks. One of the two. Okay, so center drill, dot punch, like the dot punch. Okay, the parts of the drill, or the chuck, okay, I'm just going to go through these. So you have a headstock, has the gears and all that. So again, you can change gear and change speed. Uh, holds the chuck, the chuck holds the piece. So you can see the piece there again, we're used to a three jaw chuck, holds the piece. You have your tool post, that holds the tools, doesn't move. Your top slide. The top slide is controlled by this. It can move a very small amount in and out like that. For very precise measurement. The cross slide here. That, okay, so you can't see it. But it's moving in and out. So again, the way we're looking at it. So if you looked at it from the side, it's moving. Um, oh, the way we're looking at it now, it's moving away from us and it's moving back towards us. And then you have the saddle. The saddle moves up and down much quicker. Okay, again, you know yourself from using this handle. It flies it up and down. Again, rack and pinion used for that. And that's really all you need. And then your emergency stop, obviously, to stop it. Again, the only two things that can be done on the tailstock are center drilling and drilling. That's all we use it for. We might use it for a bit of tapping, but rarely. Okay, so that's the part of the lead. So you have the headstock, the chuck. The, so the headstock, again, so you need to write down so what, the, what the point of the headstock is. Headstock controls the speed, can change the speed, and holds the chuck. The chuck has three jaws to hold circular pieces, or cylindrical pieces. Tool post holds the tool. The, the top slide is for very small movements, so you know yourself for very precise movements. Can move, it's very limited in its moving. Can't move too far. It's only, it's only able to move about four inches, six inches. The top slide brings the piece in and out, or brings the tool in and out towards the piece. The tail stock is for central drilling and drilling. The cross slide goes up and down the whole length of the piece. Again, there's its limits. There, it's able to go the whole length of the lathe. So it brings the moves the moves the tool up and down the length. Of the latest keyword there length that's your saddle and then your emergency stop is for emergencies i don't know did i say cross slide the cross slide is for in and out sort of coming towards us and coming back going away from us as we're looking at it there 
And that's really it for the leg, guys. Again, we will look at the cut, uh, clearance angle and break angle, things like that. Again, Mr. Kelly did go through other stuff on the four jaw chuck and three jaw chuck, which will be found in the notes, okay?